guys, it's Ariel here from Fix My Books and I am going to talk about how I started my bookkeeping business as an immigrant in Canada. So I think a lot of people know I'm Ariel, the bookkeeping girl on YouTube, but not many people know that I actually am an immigrant. I immigrated to Canada and started my bookkeeping business here. So I constantly get a lot of questions, even from local Canadians, you know, like how did you start your bookkeeping business in Canada? So I thought that instead of trying to respond to all the comments one by one on all the different YouTube videos, I would just make this YouTube video and like hopefully I cover all the topics you guys are interested in. So let's get started. Okay, so before I started my bookkeeping business, I just want to note that these are the things that I already did. So number one is I already had my bookkeeping certificate from Loyalist College, which is a community college here in Canada. And um, if you guys want to know how I did that, I... In a previous video, I think I mentioned that I was actually studying bookkeeping while I was in Hong Kong before I even landed in Canada, which is kind of crazy because during that time that I was studying in Hong Kong, distance education was not a thing. You know, that was before COVID, before the whole, you know, everybody gets to work from home, everybody studies at home kind of thing. So if you are interested in that and how I did that, I will link the other video down below where I talk about that more in depth. So next is I actually got certified with an accounting software. So this is, you know, I'm certified with QuickBooks Online. You don't need to get certified with QuickBooks Online. You can go with a different software like Xero or Sage. I personally just chose QuickBooks because I think around 80% of small businesses in North America use QuickBooks Online. So I just knew with that in mind that it would be easier for me to get clients here in North America versus if I was certified with Zero because the vast majority of businesses here use QuickBooks Online, right? I wouldn't have to force them and say, oh yeah, if you want to work with me, you have to switch to Zero and stuff like that. So that's primarily one of the reasons why I did um, choose to get certified with QuickBooks Online. I did um, go through the certification process with Zero. Um, if you want to learn more about that and why I prefer QuickBooks actually over Zero, and not just because I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro advisor, because some of you guys are saying, oh, you only like QuickBooks because that's, you know, you're a pro advisor, blah, blah, blah. It's like, there are reasons why I like QuickBooks. There are reasons why I like Zero. Um, but at the end of the day, I prefer QuickBooks much, much more than Zero. It just comes down to the functionality of it. QuickBooks has a lot more functionality than Zero, especially when it comes to payroll and sales tax, which is the biggest headaches. Um, I already touched on this in a previous video, so I won't go in depth with it again, but just you know, take note, choose your own accounting software, not saying which one you need to get certified with. Um, just take note, it would be nice to have that before you even start your business. So the third thing is I got certified with other softwares, not just um, QuickBooks Online, but I did the certification with HubDoc. And as most of you know, HubDoc is actually a zero... Um, not zero certified, but HubDoc is got bought out by zero. So zero now owns HubDoc. So another software that you can think of being certified in would be Dext or like a payroll software, maybe like Ceridian or something like that. If you want to go with like a third party payroll software just to like beef up your resume. I personally just did HubDoc. So I'm certified in both QuickBooks and HubDoc. So other softwares like HubDoc, if you're not familiar with it, or Dex, they are mostly uh, with regards to accounts payable and the management of that. 
you don't necessarily have to do it but it would help a lot because that's the first kind of thing business owners ask okay so you're let's say okay you did the bookkeeping certificate great you're certified with um quickbooks it's like okay so how are we gonna handle receipts right that's usually the third question which then you can go oh i'm actually also certified with let's say um dex or hubdoc and i i can you know set this up for you and teach you the ways to use the software and things like that so that it will also actually help your bookkeeping practice so that's another software not an accounting software but like an ancillary software that i got certified with that kind of feeds also into accounting like you know the bookkeeping but it's not really like an accounting software it's more of like document management and receipt management and the fourth and last thing I did before I started my business, and a lot of you will roll your eyes at me, but I did a SWOT analysis and I wrote out like a business plan, right? SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you can just search that on YouTube. I don't want to go in depth with what a SWOT analysis is, um, just because there are so many other videos on YouTube to explain this. So just be aware that before I started, I already did all these things, right? So with the SWOT analysis, it identifies, again, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And that I think once you have that, then you're going to have a better idea of how you actually need to structure your business. And I think that really, really helped me out. So... Okay, so the basics. What did I actually do to start my business? So number one, and I've said this so many times, I registered my business via owner.co and I would encourage all of you if you are thinking of starting a business to register using owner they make it super super easy and I also have um, a discount code down below it is an affiliate link so i just want to say that but it will give you a 15 percent discount if you do choose to use it if you want to register through owner and not use the affiliate link and not get the discount that's perfectly fine as well next is i got a cra business number after i obviously registered my business uh, this is not automatic with owner previously, but with the new clients that I've been taking on that have registered through owner, this is becoming more and more automatic where if you register with owner, you usually get a business number with it. I just want to separate these two out because again, I'm not sure if that's a standard thing with owner or it was just with the clients that I handled, but just be aware that was the second thing that I did after I registered my business. Next is I built my website plus I got a professional email. So we don't have, you know, bookkeeping at, at gmail.com or something like that. We have the whole at fixmybox.ca emails, which really a lot of people ask, oh, is it worth it to get that? It is worth it. Like, trust me, it makes you look more professional. And now in a world where you don't hand out business cards, right? People don't call you like a phone number. They'll say, what's your email? So, you know, if, you're, if your email is, you know, arielsbookkeeping at gmail.com, that's not going to be as professional as a fixmybooks.ca like email where people know, okay, she is in business. She is serious about this. Um, and also it's super easy now. I registered my like website, like the domain and everything just through Squarespace. So I bought the domain through Squarespace. I built the website through Squarespace. I got the professional email through Squarespace, which is linked with G Suite. Um, so I automatically got the G Suite Google Drive thing as well. So it's it, they make it super easy. There is no excuse, guys. So this is some of the things a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't have money in the beginning. Yes, I get that. But this is your investment in your business i'm not saying go crazy spend 10 grand on a startup but like really 20 bucks a month for a website and a professional email you can't you can't you know pay that so like how serious are you really about starting a business so that's really important make sure that you do that 
Number four is I started social media accounts for my business. So obviously, YouTube, hello, like I'm here. Um, next would be like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's really up to you um, what you want to start. I just kind of started all of them because I didn't know, you know, which platform would stick or like would be the best for my business. Um, but now, obviously, I'm a YouTube girl. So <laughs> now, you know, my... My Instagram, my Facebook, my LinkedIn, I just, I update that for more of like proof of life. Like we are alive, you know, we are active on these social media accounts, but I wouldn't really say it really does anything for my business. Like most of um, my new clients come in through YouTube or Google search because of the reviews that we have on, on the Google My Business thing. Okay, so next after that is I obviously got professional liability insurance or errors and omissions insurance. You know, if you are a professional, you're starting a business, super, super important. You have to get professional liability insurance. You know, everyone wants to do things 100% perfect. But again, there are some errors and omissions that do happen. So if that happens to you, you want to have something like this in place. Um... You know, it's just a CYA policy, right? Um, next, it would be a scheduling software. So for me, I went with Calendly. There are a lot of free options out there. I'm just telling you guys like what I did and what I used um, just so there are no questions. But that doesn't mean that like I'm promoting it or like telling you to go with that software. Okay, like some people think, Again, because I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, I push everyone into QuickBooks. No, um, if I think there's a better fit for you, I will definitely tell you. So with this, I just went with Calendly, but I know that there are a lot of great ones out there. So it's really up to you which one um, you want to use. So the reason why you really need a scheduling software is because you want to make it easy for your clients to book a time with you. You don't want to go through the email back and forth. Oh, are you free on this day? How about this time on this day? Blah, 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 right? It's difficult. Have a scheduling software, book the meeting. All of this that I'm telling you guys is really meant to put you in a good position so that you have a leg up against all the other people starting businesses, right? We are in a convenience culture. So you have to make it as convenient as possible for your clients to book with you or to speak to you or get in touch with you because the more convenient it is for them, the more clients you're going to land. Okay, next is I got a document signing software. Again, this is part of the whole convenience culture thing, right? Imagine how this would work before right? Like before you have a document signing software, like, you know, Adobe sign, hello sign, hello sign was a free one that I went with in the beginning. I no longer use it because I outgrew hello sign. So I'm now with PandaDoc. But in the beginning, it was like a free um, doc online document signing. And I think I could send like three a month for free. And it's not like I was landing three clients a month in the beginning. So it worked out well for me. So I would say this is actually very important as well because when you send, you know, a client a contract, you don't want them to have to download and print the contract, sign it, and then like send it back to you. Even the whole Adobe like sign sign thing where you send it to them, they download the PDF, sign it, and then like email it back to you is actually very inconvenient. If you have a document signing software where they literally just one click of a button can sign it using their phone, there is now no excuse not to sign it. So the reason why I'm telling you these things is because you want to make it easy for your client, as I mentioned, but also you need to remove the barriers. There should be like, oh, I couldn't do this because of this, right? Like you want to remove all those barriers so that you get, you know, you get the client, they sign your agreement and you get paid your deposit or you get paid for the work that you did. Okay, next is I bought a legal contract template from Law Depot. So in the beginning, 
right? You still want to protect yourself again with all these things. So buy up something from Law Depot, like a blank template, customize it. And although it might not be perfect, you at least have, you know, a written agreement with your client that you can hold on to, right? So when things go sideways, which obviously that's not what we want to happen, but it really does happen a lot with with businesses, you have it in writing, you have a signed agreement with them in terms of what um, your deliverables are, what they're expecting for you from you, how much you should be paid, et cetera, et cetera. So just basics, um, again, CYA policy, have a contract in place. Okay. Next is that after I had all of that in place, I started going on freelancing websites. So this is, you know, like Upwork, um, freelancer.com. I went on all those websites. I, you know, bid on like so many projects. I like, I distinctly remember, as I said, I think I've said this so, so many times. I distinctly remember on like Upwork and I was asking my husband, I said, it's been three months. I've been rejected literally 200 times, right? I had 200 um, proposals that was just sitting there. No one was responding to it, nothing. And I was really crying. I was thinking my business hasn't even like taken off and it's already going down because I can't even land a single client. So after 217 proposals, someone finally said, okay, I see something in you. I'm going to hire you. And that's how I landed my first client. And that client is still with me up to today. And that client has really like built and sold businesses. And we are now onto like, I think our second or third business together or third corporation together. And again, I'm still his bookkeeper. He's still my client. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a feel good, you know, moment to remember that. Um, so after I started going on the freelancing websites, I actually not after, but like simultaneously, I was also combing through Facebook groups for referrals. Um, and if you just did any basic research, you would see that there are like a lot of accounting Facebook groups. And there are a lot of referrals out there from people who are either downsizing their practice, don't want to deal with a certain niche of bookkeeping, so they want to, you know, refer this new client out, whatever it may be. There are a lot of referrals there. And if you just, you know, go in to these groups day in, day out, you will find a referral. Um, so I want to touch on this later on, but I think I'm going to make a video about it. Um, it's called bookkeeping niches. So different bookkeepers have different niches so just because we're all bookkeepers doesn't mean we all do the same thing some bookkeepers they'll specialize in let's say restaurants or e-commerce bookkeeping which i specialize in e-commerce bookkeeping and if someone comes our way that you know doesn't really slot into our specialty let's say you know i'm an e-com and someone from the a nonprofit comes my way I would just say, no, I don't handle nonprofits. And then I have someone who I know loves to handle nonprofits that I would be happy to refer them to. So it's not just taking and taking like with the Facebook groups as well. Like I give out a lot of referrals in the Facebook groups and, and it's because I would rather give out a referral from someone, you know, I maybe I don't know them in person, but I've seen them in the groups. I've seen them do consistent work. This is really their niche. I would rather refer a client to that person than the client just go on Kijiji or something and like find a random person online that you don't know if they're going to specialize in that particular bookkeeping niche. So it goes both ways. Just because you're going through the Facebook groups to get referrals, when you start to grow, right, you should give back to the community and give out referrals in the Facebook groups for those bookkeepers who are just starting out, right? And one more tip that I actually wished I knew in the beginning, so this is not really like what I did, it's more like, you know, what I wish I knew. I wish 
I got a practice management software and a CRM, uh, CRM software in the beginning. And I was talking about, you know, a while ago where, of course, you don't want to spend 10 grand on like just a startup all in one go. But once you start landing more and more clients, I would really encourage you to get a practice management software and a CRM software. And that is because... Once you've trained your clients, let's say you get the first 10 or 15 clients, once you've trained your clients in the system, it is very, very difficult to actually get them to use a different system, which I've encountered this in my firm. A lot of the clients that were my initial clients, again, the first 10 to 15 clients, you can manage that with just like Google Docs and spreadsheets and things like that. But once you really start to grow, you are going to find out that, you know, Google Docs and spreadsheets don't cut it. And you would really want a practice management software. But if you didn't put a practice management software in place early on, the buy-in for your clients, they would... They would fight you against it because you've trained them. They like communicating with you through email. And then you're going to tell them, oh, communicate with me through a client portal. You know, change is always difficult. So I wish I put this system early on. I do still have some clients that message me through email and not through the client portal. But that was my fault because I trained them that way. So I just have to live with it. But yeah, one thing I wish I had in the beginning um, next is a CRM software. Again, as you grow, it's hard to keep track of these things. Like, you know, there's no use getting, you know, 10 or 20 different inquiries when you can't even follow up with them. You don't know what's in your sales pipeline, things like that. So a CRM software is key if you want to scale and grow. And the last thing I want to tell you guys is act like a large company. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the practice management software, CRM software, and things like that. Even though I know you guys are all just like, oh, I'm just a freelancer. I don't even have staff, blah, blah, blah. That's fine, right? Brand yourself. Have like, choose your brand colors. Like, fix my books, right? Like, it's like, it has certain colors. It follows the theme. And we put, you know, things in place like a, ma a practice management software, CRM software, things like that. So we're trying to act like a large company in terms of if large companies have, you know, something like Adobe Sign or something, we should have something similar to that. Not the exact same thing, but there's a reason why these large companies need those types of systems in place. So early on, act like a large company. And when you look at things, don't just think, oh, this is an expense, this is money going out. Think about the long-term benefits of investing in that system, like a practice management software. Like, yes, it might be difficult at first. Yes, the setup might be expensive and all these other things. But in the long run, would it be worth it for you and your firm? You know, that's a question you need to answer. So hopefully... Um, you guys got the basics of what to do in terms of like how I started my bookkeeping business and how you can too and also my regrets <laughs> when I started. So I hope this helps you guys out there and I hope I answered all your questions. If you guys have any other questions about how I started my bookkeeping business, please comment them down below. And once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you always get notified whenever I upload new videos to my YouTube channel. And once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books, helping you fix your books.